Now the easiest way of using our melting pot is using moulds. There's loads of different moulds you can use. I've picked, and I do apologise for my dirty mat, but I like a dirty mat. I've picked um, these moulds that you'll find on my website. Now they're really flexible, so that means you can get into them to get UT out. They're obviously you can use them with loads of different products, um, so you can use them with clay, with fine or with air dry clay. And of course we're going to put things into these. Now don't just stick to mat moulds that have been uh, designed for your melt pot we're also going to try some cake molds obviously i haven't baked with these because that would be a bit wrong um again silicone even though they're quite thin these are absolutely perfect for our uter i've also used some um molds these ones have been designed for cake decorating um, and you'll find these on create and craft i'll show you how to use those because we can make some fantastic uh flowers but our first molds are the easy molds now what we've done we've got four molds when i'm doing a project i like to have a few ready at once because they do need to cool down because i'm not very um i'm not very patient so it's nice to have a few ready now i'm going to get some different products out so i'm going to get some gold leaf again you'll find that on the website i'm also using mica flakes and of course you'll find it on the website and then we've got some mica powder which you won't find on the website but you'll find in lots of good shops including Crate and Craft okay we're going to decorate all these the first one I'm just going to put mica powder in you don't need a lot just a tiny bit of mica powder mix up your colours see what different um, different shades will give you there we go so that's our first one we are mica powder just give it a blow get rid of any excess I'm going to show you a few different things just so you'll see um, what what they actually do. Now the next one, actually I'm going to put in the mica flake. So I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of mica flake in there. The next one, and that my gold leaf. Now, what I like about this, when you're using gold leaf, you know when we tell you to collect all the scrap bits, never throw anything away? The scrap bits are now brilliant for this because I don't want too much in there. So I'm just going to put a little bit of my um, gold leaf in there. And I've noticed he's got a big chunk in his nose. I don't want a massive chunk in his nose. So I'll put some at the side there. Then I love this face mold. It's one of my favourites. So pop the uh, metal leaf in there. The last one, we're going to mix it up. So the last face that we've got, a nice little moon face. We're going to put a little bit of mica, so a touch of mica, and you don't don't overfill it. You really don't need much at all. I'm not completely covering it. Make sure your um your paintbrush doesn't shed, because there's nothing worse than having big hairs in it. And then we're going to put a few, just a pinch of the mica flake, and I haven't put a lot in that one at all. I just want a touch. Now then, we're going to move all these out the way, and then we're going to do the pouring. So, what we do with pouring, we have got our wonderful, um, on the, let me just bring this in, so on the melt pot you've got your pourer, make sure with this one, I've got it nice and, oh, can you see that, I love the melt pot, as soon as you start to, to stir it, it looks like it's full of magic. Now this one is actually um, the, I do believe it's the red. So it's the, the colourful um, thoughts of jewel enamels and it's that beautiful red that's in there. And I've mixed it with clear. So the clear is the main bulk of it, but then the colours are red. Now all I'm going to do, using my melt pot, just tilt it. Now make sure you practice because obviously it's better if you're more controlled. Don't let it run away. So we're just tipping that into our actual mould. That's the first one. And you can see I've just allowed it to go to the top. The second one. So again, just allowing that to tip into the mould. I'm just being a bit slow. You can actually do this really quick. Now, that one's gone over. Don't worry too much. I mean, you can, while it's warm, while it's still hot, you can scoop it out. The lovely thing about these moulds, it'll all just peel back off again, so it doesn't matter. We're working on our heat-resistant craft mat. I highly recommend your heat-resistant craft mat. You need one, okay? So make sure you work on your heat-resistant craft mat. That one, and then our last one. So we're just again pouring, I won't let this one run away with me this time. Be much more gentle. There we are. And then just pull that away. Now, 
you need to leave these to cool really important <laughs> the amount of times i've put my fingers in these and it's hot it really does burn so please don't put your fingers in um, i'll just tell you about the tools this is a, silic a silicone applicator you'll see i've just peeled off the actual uter that goes back in the pot it goes back in the pot and it'll melt back down again as do all these bits as well so all the bits on my table when they've cooled down these will all go back in my pot. Some of them have got a bit of paint on, but I'm not too bothered about that. I quite like seeing what things do in my melt pot. It does make you, um, it does make you experiment. Now, they'll melt back down. In the meantime, these ones, you need to let them cool properly. So I'm going to move them out my way so we don't make a mess of those. Now we're going to have a look at what's been cooking in our moulds. To make sure these are cool, um, don't do what I generally do, I know I'm going to test it by sticking my finger in, just touch the back of them with your tool and you'll obviously see that there's no dint in there, they're completely cool. Normally I do take these out when they're a little bit warmer um, because then you can actually put a hole in them with your pokey tool. Okay, nice ma uh, mould so it means they come out easily can you see that one first of all this was a hard one where we just use the mica and the mica has obviously color tinted it for us but then the uter because it's such a nice fine liquid it goes into all the fantastic parts of the mold so you get full detail so that's our big heart the next one we've got is our tiny heart and the tiny heart just pull some extra bits away and um, you can see there the mica flakes now the mica flakes have embedded oops beautifully into that heart <laughs> it's a slippery one that one um it's embedded into that heart they're not going to go anywhere i mean they are properly embedded so they do look bejeweled the next one that we've got uh, will take our face out and look at i love this one that is gorgeous. Now what you've got here, you've got the mica powder, you've then got the mica flakes um, and I love the, again the way the mica flakes have embedded themselves into that fantastic face. Last but not least, we have got our larger face. Now with this one, the mica, the, sorry, the metal flakes again have embedded into the face. Now the features, because we haven't used any mica powder, the features aren't really that pronounced, but I'm gonna show you how to actually bring those features out. But using the metal flakes, I love that. I love the way it breaks up the, the actual UT and sits in there and creates dents in the UT. It gives you um, real interest to your piece. Okay, let's show you what we can do next with our fantastic moulds. To make this stand out, I'm going to use a product called Gilding Wax. I love this stuff. You can use it on card, you can use it on wood, uh, but it's absolutely amazing on Uter. Now, there's two types I use mainly. Um, the one from Cosmic Shimmer, the, uh, sorry, Creative Expressions, and then the one that's called Gleams. And these are beautiful. Now, easy to apply as well. They both work in exactly the same way. Take the lid off. You can apply them with a soft uh, cloth, but me being me, I'm obviously going to apply them with my finger. Just get a little bit, only just rub them. You don't need to dig in. Just rub the top and the gleams will stick to your finger. And then just gently rub this on your Uta. Now, the important thing, don't do this whilst it's warm. If it's still warm or hot, it will just melt and you won't get that fabulous finish. Can you see how that's already starting to come through? Oh, I love these. I think they're absolutely cool. Now, I'm going to put... Just to show you that they work in the same way, I'm going to put the silver from the gleams, and it's a beautiful light silver as well. And then from my uh, my cosmic shimmer one, I'm going to put this is my light, the golden light. So just mixing those over, and look at that. I mean, this just looks incredible. It gives you such a a strange, well, it's such a different look. And it really just um, it emphasises the texture. So you've created texture by embedding those fantastic gold leaf flakes in here. This will now bring out that texture and really make it shine through. Now I love mixing the gold and the silver. I think that looks fantastic. Obviously play with your colours. Um, me being me, I'd probably carry on mixing and playing with colours. Maybe introduce a darker blue around the eyes. Now the beautiful thing about gleams and your, uh, your gilding flakes, when it's dried a little bit, to make it shine more, just take a bit of kitchen cloth, or a soft cloth again, and just buff it over. And it's the same if you're using... Um, if you're using it on cardstock, whatever you're using, just give that a nice buff and that'll allow the gleams and the actual gilding wax 
to shine through. Isn't that fabulous? Now we're quickly going to do the same on that heart because this is another one that looks sensational. This time we'll use that deep red. So this is the, again, exactly the same way. We're not digging in. We're just picking it up with our finger and experiment with this. See which colours look best. What's beautiful about this, this is the one where we put mica powder in first of all. So the mica powder will still sit on the uh, the bottom part of the mould but can you see the actual gilding wax has just touched the actual top of the mould and gives you that fantastic two-tone effect. Again leave it a few seconds and then buff that with your cloth and you'll get some beautiful effects. I highly recommend gilding wax for these. It's a beautiful product and it lasts ages.